Hello mga kaalam, this is Sir Barry for Kaalam Dag Learning Videos. We are now in the third quarter of the school year and the field of science that we will take up for this quarter is physics, the branch of science concerned with the nature and properties of matter and energy. In this episode, we are going to talk about Describing motion. The targets of this episode are the following. Know the difference between distance and displacement, speed and velocity. Use illustrations to describe motion and solve problems involving distance and displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Anything that moves has motion. Yes, that's easy. But in science, we describe motion more carefully. We use terms and definitions to describe motion objectively. Today, we will be learning the basic concepts of kinematics, the quantitative description of motion, and we will interpret motion of objects using illustrations. Motion is a continuous change in position. A change in position is evidence of motion. To understand further about the concept of motion, study these pictures. Focus your attention at the book on top of the table. Can you say that the book has been moved or was it set into motion? How about this picture? Can you say that there was movement or motion in this picture? Lastly, how about this car? Is the car in the picture in motion? Yes, mga kaalam. You can probably guess that the first two sets of pictures have movements or there were evidence of motion because there were changes in the position. The book on the left side of a stationary table underwent motion because it has changed its position to the right side of the table. The table serves as the point of reference. In this scenario, Either the clock was moved to the right of the table, if the table is your reference point, or the table was moved to the left of the clock, if your reference point is the clock. Both sets of pictures show the state of motion because there is evidence of changes in position with respect to its surrounding and time. While this car is not moving or in the state of rest, because it does not change its position with respect to its surroundings and to time. But once this car moves and you are in this car, you are at rest with respect to the car. But together with the car, you are moving with respect to the ground. Now that you already know how to tell that an object is in motion, let us now describe an object's motion by how far the object travels. We can do this in two ways. First, by getting the distance, and the other one is by getting the displacement. To define both distance and displacement, study this example. This boy travels walking on the street for 3 kilometers towards north, then turns east for 4 kilometers before reaching his school. The question is, how far is the boy from the school? Again, we can answer this in two ways, by getting the distance or by getting the displacement. The total length of the actual path traveled by the object regardless of the direction is called distance. Therefore, distance is a scalar quantity. In our example, the total distance traveled by the boy going towards his school is the total distance is equal to d sub 1 which is 3 kilometers plus d sub 2 which is 4 kilometers. Therefore, the total distance traveled by the boy 
going towards his school is 7 kilometers. Tracement, on the other hand, is the shortest path between the initial and final position of an object. It is an imaginary straight line from the initial position to the final position and it is a vector quantity because it takes into consideration the directions traveled. In our example, the path traveled by the boy formed a right triangle. To get the displacement of the boy from his initial position to his school, we will solve for the hypotenuse of this triangle. We will use the mathematical formula by Pythagoras to solve this problem. The Pythagorean theorem says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared or c which is the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the a squared plus b squared where a is equal to 3 kilometers and b is equal to 4 kilometers. From this formula, we were able to solve that the displacement is equal to 5 kilometers northeast, meaning to say that the school, which is the final position, is 5 kilometers northeast of the initial position of the boy. To further clarify the difference between distance and displacement, study this table. Distance is the total path traveled by an object represented by a symbol small letter d while displacement is the shortest path from starting position to the final position represented by still a small letter d but notice the arrow above it indicating the direction or a bold letter d distance is a scalar quantity while displacement is a vector quantity Distance is always positive, cannot be negative, and zero. While displacement can be positive, negative, or zero, depending on the initial and final position of the object. Distance can never be less than the displacement. While displacement can either be equal to or less than the distance. Distance gives complete information of the route followed by the body while displacement does not give complete information of the route followed by the body. That was describing motion as to how far the object travels. Now, let us describe motion as to how fast the object is traveling. The direction it is going, or is the motion slowing down or speeding up? Or is it changing direction? Are you familiar with the word speed? Probably you will associate these terms with the traffic signs you see on the streets, such as this speed limit sign which will tell the driver how fast he should go. What are the units you can see in this speed limit sign? It says here KPH, which means kilometers per hour, which involves kilometer, a unit for distance, and hour, which is a unit of time. Operationally, speed is defined as distance divided by time. Speed is a scalar quantity, meaning Direction is not indicated in this measure. The standard unit of speed is meter per second. Other units are kilometers per hour, miles per hour. Now, let us try to solve this problem about speed. Lydia de Vega Mercado was considered Asia's fastest woman in the 1980s. She holds both Philippines and Southeast Asia records with her performance best of 11.28 seconds in a 100-meter track. How fast can she run? In order for us to solve this problem, let us use the GAFSA approach. Given, ask, formula, solution, and answer. Now for our given, we have here the distance which is equal to 100 meter and the time is equal to 11.28 seconds. 
asked is we are looking for the speed which is represented by the small letter V. Our formula is speed is equal to distance divided by the time. So our solution here, speed is equal to 100 meter divided by 11.28 seconds which gives us the answer speed here is equal to 8.87 meters per second. Most vehicles have a device called a speedometer which measures instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed is the speed of an object at a particular moment in time. Speedometers are important to the drivers because they need to know how fast they are going so they know they are already driving beyond the speed limit or not. In describing the motion of an object, we do not just describe how fast the object moves. We also consider the direction to where it is going. Just like in weather bulletins, we are not only informed with the speed of the storm, but also the direction where it is going. Speed with direction is referred to as velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity since not only the magnitude is specified but also the direction. In getting the velocity, the formula is velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. In symbols, velocity is small letter v but notice the arrow above it which indicates the direction is equal to the displacement divided by time. The standard unit of velocity is meter per second, kilometer per hour, or mile per second. Let us try to solve this problem. A motorcycle travels 100 kilometer in 2 hours along SRP or the South Road Properties to southward direction. What is the velocity of the motorcycle? Again, we will use GAPSA, given, ask, formula, solution, and then the answer. Our given here, we have the displacement is equal to 100 km southward, and the time is 2 hours. Our ask is, of course, the velocity. Our formula is velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. So our solution here, velocity is equal to 100 km divided by 2 hours. So that gives us 50 km per hour and the direction is southward. So that's our answer. In reality, objects do not always move at a uniform or constant velocity. Typhoons do change their speeds and direction or both speed and direction as they travel along. The rate of change in speed or velocity of an object is referred as acceleration. An increase in speed or velocity is positive acceleration. On the other hand, if speed or velocity decreases, it is negative acceleration or deceleration, meaning the object is slowing down. Acceleration is defined operationally as change in velocity divided by elapsed time. So therefore, our formula for acceleration is acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by time, where Small letter A with an arrow above it symbolizes acceleration. V sub F stands for the final velocity and V sub I is for the initial velocity and the small letter T for time. The standard unit of acceleration is meter per second per second or meter per second square. Other units are kilometer per hour per hour 
mile per second per second. When a mango falls from its branch, it is accelerating due to gravity. When the car slows down, when the brakes are applied, it is decelerating. The car turning at the corner is an example of acceleration because the direction is changing. The quicker the turns, the greater the acceleration. Let us try to solve this problem about acceleration. A bus moving along N. Bacalso Avenue southward increases its velocity from 10 meters per second to 40 meters per second in 5 seconds. What is the acceleration of the bus? Our given for this problem is we have V sub i for the initial velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. The final velocity is 40 meters per second and our time is 5 seconds and we are looking for the acceleration. The formula for acceleration is acceleration is equal to the change in velocity in which we can get it from deducting the initial velocity from the final velocity or Vf minus Vi divided by time. So for our solution, let us first get the change in velocity. So we will subtract the initial velocity from the final velocity. So that is 40 meters per second minus 10 meters per second. That gives us 30 meters per second. So that is our change in velocity. Then, then we will apply the formula. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity which is 30 meters per second divided by the time which is 5 seconds. It gives us an answer 6 meters per second per second. So our answer is acceleration is equal to 6 meters per second square south. The bus is speeding up at 6 meters per second for every second southward. There you have it mga kaalam. Describing motion. In uh, summary, motion is a change in position with respect to a reference point. Distance and displacement, speed and velocity, and acceleration are ways to describe motion. Distance is a scalar quantity, having magnitude but no direction. Velocity is a vector quantity, having both magnitude and direction. Average speed refers to the total distance traveled divided by the total time of travel. Operationally, velocity is defined as displacement divided by total time of travel. A speedometer measures instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity. Vector is a quantity having both the magnitude and direction. Acceleration is defined as the change in velocity in a time interval. The opposite of acceleration is deceleration. I hope you had another fun learning experience with us. See you in our next episode of Kalamdag Learning Videos.